is this why you brought me here, Commissioner? Partly. My old regiment, you know. Oh, yeah. We're a couple of coppers, not socialized, so why are we here? Just have a few drinks with your old comrades. One old comrade, and one of the real lions. Colonel in chief of the regiment. General Lord Glenshield, Baron McGregor of Ross, Knight of the Thistle, Knight, Grand Cross of the Star of India, etc., etc. You may know him better as General Sir Hector McGregor. What, old Hellfire Mac? Exactly. And he'll be dead on time, so make sure your tie's correctly knotted and your ears lie flat. Well, here he is, right on the second. You'll guess, sir. Well, 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 young Kipper. Why, you haven't changed a bit. How are you, sir? Oh, splendid, thanks. And you're Commander Gillian, eh? I've seen your pictures in the paper, so I hope you're as good as they say you are. <laughs> Now, in this regiment, we uh, drink our sherry out of half-pint tankards. But for the weaklings from south of the border, we also have glasses. Thank you to me, sir. As I'm a weakling who has to keep his wits about him, you better give me a glass, sir. Oh, well said, young man. <laughs> uh, did you see our fellows this morning? We did. And uh, how did you like them, Commander? Splendid, sir, splendid. Oh, he has good answers, this chap. Yeah. Uh, well, confusion. Now, I suppose you're wondering what all this is about, eh? Yes, I am. Uh, shall you come with me? Gentlemen, the famous Balaclava Silver. The regiment's proudest trophy. Magnificent, isn't it? It's superb. Malplaquet, Heights of Abram, Waterloo. Oh, I could go on and on. Each name a roll of drums. <laughs> and right behind us, gentlemen, Balaclava. The thin red line to which gallant company this regiment belonged. I, I hope you'll forgive me, gentlemen, for my pride in what most moderns would regard as past glories. Uh, well, past they may be, but glories they still are. Indeed. Well, Commander, what do you think of our silver? Yes, uh, magnificent. It's being stolen, Commander Gideon. I beg your pardon? You're not serious. Damn serious. It's being stolen piece by piece. Get out here and I'll show you. Uh, have a look at this. I don't understand. It's a fake. A very good one, but a fake. Lead overlaid with silver. How many of these fakes have you found? Oh, about a third of the collection. How many pieces in the collection? 543, a complete service for 100 people. What would the value be? Oh, priceless, priceless. Insured for how much? Oh, 100,000 pounds. When did you first discover this, sir? Ten days ago. How? I bought one of the originals. Oh, where? In Amsterdam. Amsterdam? Yes, 43 van der Epps, a shop known as Krupnings. They have 61 pieces of our silver there. At the request of the Dutch police, they're holding it for me. Our ambassador arranged all that. He uh, used to be one of us, you know. You go to Amsterdam often? Oh, about once a year, to eat rice tafel at Barley's and buy some bulbs for the garden. And you were passing the shop? Yes, there were some old maps in the window, the Battle of Linden to be accurate. So I went inside, and there in a glass case was the silver. So I bought a piece. Well, gentlemen, shall we finish our sherry? Hmm? Oh, Eric, I'm sorry if we've kept you waiting. Not at all, sir. Uh, I want you to meet a friend of mine, the Commissioner of Scotland Yard, Sir Reginald Scott Marr. Uh, Colonel McAlpin, oh, the CEO yeah. of our regiment. Very yeah, well. Uh, and uh, Commander Gideon, Colonel McAlpin. Did I count? Come on over. Uh, no. uh, well, I, I told them. Nasty business, isn't it? Very nasty. General, have you reported this to the insurance company? No, Commander. But why not? For the same reason that we haven't reported to the police. Well, you have now. I think not, Commander. You two are here as my guests, and policemen or not, you will respect your position and my confidence. Well, you mean you don't want the police to act in this matter? Officially, no. Unofficially, yes. Scotland Yard never acts unofficially. It will this time. This is a matter for the regiment, a matter of honor. But it's a matter of theft. Not this case. In every case. Just a minute, George. Obviously, you suspect a member of the regiment. Obviously, or I should have dialed 999. Would you have anybody in mind, General? No. What do you think, Alec? I'm as baffled as you are, sir. Who has the readiest access to the collection? Well, the mess orderlies will clean it. There are eight of them in all, under a mess sergeant, McKinnon. Well, suppose we start with the officers. The officers, Commander, are gentlemen. Well, possibly they are, but... No buts, Commander. No buts at all. We do want your assistance, but only if this unfortunate affair can be handled discreetly and in the strictest confidence. Can it? I'll put Commander Gideon in charge of the case personally. You can rely on him completely. I'm sure we can, Commander. 
I would suggest that you uh, join us for dinner in the mess tonight. Is that convenient? Yes, sir. We give you a chance to look us over. Oh, discreetly. Yes, That's quite. Uh, and uh, call around the flat about seven. We can talk further. Oh, and, uh, black tie, of course. Yes, yes, of course. Uh -huh. uh, no damn fool questions, mind. We don't want the regiment set by the ears. Oh, naturally. Otherwise, uh, we might catch the thief, mind <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Crazy, the whole thing, especially old man Glenshee. You think so? He thinks he's in the Middle Ages when all officers were gentlemen and a general's word was law. Well, don't fool yourself, his word damn nearly is law. Strictly and in the utmost confidence, who does he think we are? George, I know that any form of favoritism, real or implied, makes your blood boil. But in this case, well, it is my old regiment. Yeah, I suppose when we've caught this thief, he'll be asked discreetly and in the utmost confidence to resign. We'll hear no more of the matter. This case will be conducted in accordance with the general's request. And that's an order. <laughs> Okay, pull out. Do this up for me, will you, please? Wow, who's this? Yes, I am. That's enough from you. Keep it chin up. Where is everybody? A oh, crew head rehearsal. Matthew's at Caroline's for supper. Uh -huh. Dad, is it true that they don't wear anything under their kilts? Well, don't ask me. Ask a Scotsman. There. You look good. All right. All right, thanks. Dad, is it true that at mess dinners they pass the port from right hand to right hand without letting it touch the table? It is. Then don't drop it, dear old bemetal parent. They'll think you just hired him for the occasion. I'll give you poor old bemetal parents in a minute. Goodbye, love. Bye, darling. Enjoy yourself. Uh, I'm not too optimistic. Bye. 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 It's you. Come in, come in, come in. <laughs> how are you, Grandfather? Oh, I'm fine. I didn't expect to see you. I thought I'd drop by and drive you over. Oh, but how kind. Uh, you, you'll take a drink, eh? Uh, Sam, do you remember when I was a little boy, used to tell Dad there never was a whiskey like Tobamori cream? Oh, 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 close down this 50 years. Well, there's one bottle still in existence. 1896. I don't believe it. Oh, see for yourself. <laughs> Well, well. I thought you'd like it. Uh, Do for a nightcap, eh? Uh, now, put it away or else you'll have to share it. Oh, but you'll, you'll join me. No, thank you. No, no, do as you're told. Uh, what are you giving me orders? Yes, I'll jump to it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Robbie. Thank you, my son. Thank you. It was nothing. Uh, Come on, right. uh, so you found your way up here, lad. Yeah, no trouble. Uh, come in, right. come in. I'd like you to meet my grandson, Captain Robbie McGregor. Yeah. Commander Gideon, Scotland Yard. Captain McGregor. How did uh, you he'll, uh, take a drive, eh? Officer of the day! Gentlemen. Gentlemen, the Queen. God bless her. God bless her. Take leave, sir. Granted. Gentlemen, I, uh, I'm sorry to have to tell you that we've had an occurrence which has brought about a situation, uh, shall I say, a confidential situation. And that is why only company commanders and above have been informed of it. In consequence, uh, Commander Gideon, who has been our honored guest this evening, is here on a more or less unofficial official capacity. Uh, he has undertaken uh, to handle the inquiries in a discreet way. May I ask, uh, is this a police matter? Yes, Major Ross, it is. <laughs> if you please, Colonel. The balaclava silver is being stolen. Stop. Almost a third of the collection has been taken and replaced with fake duplicates. What? 
Commander Gideon is to conduct an investigation. This will be done with the utmost discretion and in absolute confidence. And it goes without saying that on your words as officers and gentlemen, not even a whisper of this goes beyond the walls of this room. Understood? Commander. Thank you, Colonel. <clears throat> well, I propose, gentlemen, to investigate the whole regiment. We will begin, my colleagues and I, with the kitchen staff, mess stewards, anybody who has ready access to the silver in the course of their routine duties. I will handle the investigation of the officers myself. Excuse me, Commander. Try right, to understand this investigation includes officers. Yes. Oh, really, sir, this is too much. Damn cheek, if you ask me. We're not a bunch of third form pimps, you know. That will be all, Major Ross. It's fantastic. It's degrading. It's outrageous. Obviously, you know nothing at all about regiments of this kind, or you wouldn't dare. It might interest you to know, Major, that in the last war, I commanded a regiment myself. Oh, in war. <laughs> well, that is rather different. Quite. In war, lots of very strange people become officers. Even commanded battalions. You know, this force not at all bad. Silence! Someone in this regiment is a thief. And it is not beyond possibility that the culprit is an officer. Every single one of you, if he knows what's good for him, will cooperate with Commander Gideon politely and to the utmost. Let there be no misunderstanding. That is an order. And now, gentlemen, you are excused. I think we've had enough talking for one evening. Do you need us any more, Commander? No, I don't think so, sir. I'll be in touch with you in the morning, Colonel. All I want now are two of the fake replicas to take with me. I'll get them. It's a sad and sorry business, Commander. Yes, sir. I suppose to a man like you, who deals constantly with the most hideous and evil crimes, a regimental silver must seem rather absurd, eh? At all, sir. I understand exactly how you feel. Then... Will you promise me that you'll try to avoid a scandal? I'll do everything I possibly can, sir, but no, I can't promise you that. Oh, well, we'll just have to stand firm, won't we? Got a bit of a turn tonight, didn't you, James? Pardon? When the old man announced that this Gideon chap is at the mess in a, um, how do you put it, an unofficial, official capacity? I was watching you. Oh? And what did you observe? You went a bit green round the gills. Don, how long have you known? Oh, for quite some time. And not nearly as unobservant as you seem to think. It'd make a bloody great scandal if it comes out, won't it? Yes. Well, what do you propose to do about it? Nothing at all, my dear sir as long as we can come to some suitable agreement. As officers and gentlemen, of course. Of course. The honor of the regiment. Hip, hip, hurrah. Well, good morning. I'm glad you think so. So the social line has been bitten at last. Social lion is dying. Where are they? In the cupboard. Which one? In the top one. Colonel McAlpine. It keeps me drinking port till oh, long after midnight. I'm glad that doesn't happen too often. I couldn't stand the pace. You'd be better off dealing with thieves and murderers. Yeah. There'd be no more formal dinners and hangovers. Obviously, you didn't let the port touch the table. Uh, you're right. It's all in there, and it's arguing. Cheers. Sir. Well, good morning, Smith. How's the Branstead robbery coming? We're holding a claim, but there are problems I'd like to talk to you about. Now, 11 o'clock, 10 minutes. Thank you, Commander. What is it? I want you, David. Two previous, sir. And you, sir. Clem. Come in, please. Uh, right. I'll sleep up. You won't believe this. What do you want me, sir? Shut the door, will you, Clem? Yesterday, I had both lunch and dinner with General Lord Glenshiel, Baron MacGregor of Ross. I uh, trust you are duly impressed. Very. The subject of our discussion, the famous Balaclava Silver. My dear Ross, there is a sort of code, don't you think? Code or no code, 6,000 quid doesn't grow on trees overnight. Well, borrow it. From whom? Your bank. Oh, merry ha-ha. 
There have been, as I recall, four or five occasions when you owed me more than 6,000. Far be it from me to pry into your personal affairs, but where did those payments come from? As you say, far be it from you to pry into my personal affairs. Quite. On the other hand, you do owe me the money. I need more time. You're in trouble, Ross. I know. I know. Well, what about Jim Murray? He's absolutely loaded with the stuff. I'm going to speak to him. Well, don't take too long about it. Hello? Oh, yes, ask Mrs. Ross to come in. Helen's here. And Jimmy, get it for you like a shot. After all, he practically owes it to you, old boy. Bah, darling. Helen, how nice. Sorry I'm late, Donald. Not at all, darling. Bart, why don't you join us for lunch, if you'd like to? Lunch with Major and Mrs. Ross is something that no bookmaker could refuse. I'll get my hat. Well, that's it, in a nutshell. But how can we possibly keep it confidential? We need files for a start. Which will be kept in my lock drawer. Well, what about outside department's records, fingerprints? We just don't tell them. Oh, charming. Yes, I couldn't agree more, but commissioner's orders, you understand? Frankly, no. Do you? Look, Glenn, just do what I say, will you? It'll make life much easier. Okay, when do we start this dance, McCarthy? Well, you start by going to Amsterdam. Plane leaves at 11. But I haven't got much time. That's right. The name of the shop is Krutnings, 43, Van der Epps. Right. And take one of these with you, will you? Now, I want to know how the originals got to Amsterdam, and I want to know where those came from. All right, be in touch. Now then, get a list out of all the younger officers and senior NCOs and the regimental antidote. Now, his name is Ogilvy, Captain Ogilvy. Right. Now, check them all thoroughly. Girls, parties, family, bookies, the lot. I want to know if anybody suddenly started living things out. And most of all, I want to know if anybody's bank balance has fluctuated recently. Well, we need court orders for the bank records. He'll get them. And start checking the men who have easiest access to the silver and the line of routine duty. Have a word with the mess sergeant. I got you. Anything else? I don't think so. Well, we're, do we work for the military police on this? No, we work alone. The honor of the regiment is at stake. Whatever the hell that means. <laughs> and surely it's not about old times you want to talk to me, Mr. Lemaitre. <laughs> You're very perceptive, Sergeant. As a matter of fact, I would like your help on a matter of great confidence. I? I want your words. You won't repeat what I'm going to tell you. You have it, sir. Well, uh, would it be about the silver now? What silver? Oh, come on, come on. You know very well what silver. Uh, and if I do? Well, it's about high time that someone was taking an interest before it's all been whipped. So you know it's going? Oh, why? How? Well, you, uh, you might say it was a kind of coincidence. Go on. It was after a dinner a few nights ago. Uh, one of our armorers, uh, Duncan MacArthur, a friend of mine, Anyway, Dunkey, he calls me into the kitchen, and you see, he used to be a silversmith in the old days. He was washing the service, and he looked at it. And, and told you it was a fake? Aye. In all confidence, of course, sir. And uh, who did you tell? Oh, Colonel McAlpin himself, sir. And he said? Oh, he said the matter was being handled. I see. Um, McKinnon, have you any ideas? Well, it's nobody among the men, sir. How do you know? Mr. Lemaitre, most of us would steal tomorrow's dinner from a starving Arab. But there's not one man jack in this regiment would touch the balaclava. No, sir. Every man looks on it as he'd look on his own mother. It's a matter of pride. There were not so many regiments in the thin red line, sir. Well, somebody is stealing it. And from inside. Aye, but not one of the men. You mean it's an officer? Oh, well, well, no, uh, I'm not saying. <laughs> Them in there. How could I know that such things were stolen? Every dealer in the world knows the Balaclava collection. Absolutely, everybody he knows the Balaclava. But not everybody is knowing the history. How many is knowing that they're first making 100 trial dishes to begin with? Trial dishes? Yes. Come with me, Inspector. There. It's in Dutch. <laughs> of course it is in Dutch. It is a Dutch book. But I translate. Pierre Lefebvre the French designer of the great Balaclava collection is so much looking for uh, perfection that he first made 100 trial dishes before commencing work on the actual collection. So, now this most polite English gentleman, he comes to my shop. He has the perfect story. He's offering for sale only trial pieces, so I buy. The pieces that you still have, what about them? They are being shipped back to London. The regiment is paying. Now look, Minet, I'm not a cook. Courtney is a name, a reputation. The gentleman who brought them in, can you describe him? Maybe about your height? Perhaps the same build? Uh, beautiful clothes. Oh, the perfect English gentleman. How often did this happen? Perhaps five or six times during the past year. One more thing. 
What can you tell me about this? <laughs> it's good. Where did it come from? Very good. <laughs> Only one man. Who? This silversmith in Paris. Antoine Dubec. <laughs> Boulevard de Montparnasse. May I use your phone? Oh, of course, Chief Inspector. Come on, Gideon's office. Oh, yes, I think we can accept a reverse charges call from Chief Inspector Keith. David from Amsterdam. Oh, David. I am. Um, I think I may have something. Yes? I see, yes. Now, well, will you go to Paris right away and see this fellow Dubec? And get back here as soon as you can. I'm positive it won't be necessary to stay in Paris overnight. Goodbye. Oh. He's got a line on the fake duplicates. Hmm? Where were we? Oh, the list of NCOs. Anybody else? Uh, no, no, just McKinnon. Uh, that brings us to the bank reports on the senior officers. Anything there? Well, only one. Uh, Major Ross. And that's his item here. Mm. That's his army salary. Take a look at this one here. That's his private income, 2,000 pounds mm. a year. Now, take a look at this one. Donald Ross. Five times in the past year, Ross has paid to his bookmaker Bart and Smith very large amounts, considerably more than the total of his army pay and his private income. The question's quite simple. How did he get it? I cannot imagine. Well, has his wife got any money? I believe so. I'm not exactly sure how much. Do you know Barton Smith? Very well. He was one of us. Oh, you mean he was in this regiment? Yes, indeed. During Korea. A splendid chap. Eaton. A lovely family. A thorough gentleman. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure. You won't mind if I have a word with him? Not at all. Thank you, Colonel. You're being a tremendous help. Oh, yes, Commander Gideon. Several regimental officers have accounts with us and their fathers before them. We're a very traditional firm. Does Major Ross have an account with you? He does. Can you tell me how it stands? I'm sorry. Our client's business is confidential. That's why we have clients. They are loyal to us and we to them. Now, look, I already have a court order on Major Ross's bank account. I know he's been paying you substantial amounts in the past year. How very clever of you. Now, where do you get it from? Ask him. Oh, I intend to, Mr. Barton Smith. I intend to ask Major Ross a great many things, and you. I might add that uh, you're both going to answer. Well, I, of course, can't speak for Major Ross, but for myself. It rather depends on the questions. Sherry? No, thanks. I understand that you were with the regiment in Korea. Mm, national service. All that nasty mud and those Chinese bullets whistling round. I prefer it here. You still have some loyalty to the old regiment, I hope. As long as nobody wants me to get shot at again. Oh, enough to concern yourself with certain friends who are still serving. In a social way. Perhaps make little trips for them now and then. I don't understand. Well, to Paris, for instance, where, where this came from. I'm sorry. It's got his name on it. Whose name? Antoine Dubec, Boulevard Montparnasse. It's lovely, isn't it? Yes, yes. He specializes in reproductions. Really? Perhaps you've been to Amsterdam recently. No. Got your passport handy? At home. So sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. If I want to see it, you can always bring it down to the yard, can't you? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Barton Smith. Sheila, give me a line. Of course, monsieur, this is my work. It is not for me to ask questions, only to copy what I am given to copy. Mm. But you know that this is the Balaclava. But of course, the collection is world famous. And you ask no question? Uh, perfectly respectable people and companies, even uh, governments ask me to copy. Uh, there is no reason to ask. I break no laws, I just copy. What more? Who brought you the originals? He never gave a name, ever. Can you describe him? About your height, uh, medium hair, an English gentleman, uh, perfect French. I can't remember anymore. Can't or won't? Monsieur, you come into my office. You ask me to cooperate. I have done so. Now you will excuse me, please. I have other things to do. Merci bien, monsieur. Au revoir, monsieur. Gather you're going out for dinner. I am. Who's the lucky man tonight? Peter Sutherland. Oh, you must be desperate. You should know. He's so incredibly common. Don't be condescending, darling. The one or two things he does much better than you do. You're as vulgar as he is. Perhaps I am, but at least I'm genuine. You, on the other hand, are overlaid with so many layers of fraud and veneer that no one knows what you are underneath. 
First there's the nanny layer, and then there's the Eton Cambridge layer, followed by the gentleman layer, and over this, and thickest of all, is the soldier layer. You can't do a thing unless you stand to attention. There's a dear little wife. You're rather a bore when you try to be perceptive. I beg your pardon. I won't bore you another minute. Give Peter my regards. If I remember, we don't do much talking. If you'll excuse me, Major. Time I let you get to bed, sir. Oh, no, 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 not yet, Robbie, not yet. Here, take another wee nip at over more cream, eh? Yeah. All right. Oh, by the way, sir, mm -hmm. I have an absolutely sure thing on the 3rd of Sandown tomorrow. Sure to pay better than 20 to 1. Care to take a fly around for a tenner? Well, if it's a sure thing, I'll take care of it for you. <sighs> We're a bit gloomy tonight, aren't we? Aye, Robbie, I, I don't mind admitting my heart's like lead. And the balaclava. Uh, you know, it's impossible for me to believe that a Highland officer and gentleman could stoop to such... God, Robbie, it makes you wonder what the world is coming to. My world, I mean. Uh, maybe I've lived too long. Don't say that, Grandad. Even that stag's probably drowned by now. Drowned? Oh, uh, some damned hydroelectric scheme. Grandad, hmm? will they catch this man? Uh, Commander Gideon telephoned just before you got here. They're practically positive that it's Donald Ross. Ross? Uh. We're in Paris in May of last year. I was. Business or pleasure? Pleasure. I never go to Paris on business. Amsterdam two days later. Perhaps that was business. Really, Commander, what is the purpose of these questions? I'm investigating a theft. Of what? You know Amsterdam well? No, not particularly. Well, have you ever been in a shop called Krutnings? No. Are you sure? Positive. I have no interest in antiques. How did you know it was an antique shop? He said so. He didn't. Well, what difference does it make? I probably heard it from somebody. The question is who? Really, Commander, what is behind all this? Oh, and I'll tell you. The balaclava silver is being stolen. I heard the rumor. Did you know, did you? From the same source? I don't remember. Look, Mr. Barton Smith, I don't believe you. This thing has been kept so quiet, it isn't even a whisper. You couldn't have possibly heard about it. You've known about it all along, haven't you? You're quite wrong. Oh, no, no, I'm quite right. You know who's behind all this, all right? What if I do? Do you think I'm going to tell you? I know you're going to tell me. Am I being charged with anything, Commander? We could probably arrange it. I want to know his name. Try and get it. Now, look, Mr. Barton Smith. No, you straight. look here, the two of you. You get this straight. You can charge me with anything you like. You can throw me into jail for as long as you please. But never. Do you understand? Never will you get anything more out of me than you've just got now. You know what this is, though, don't you? It's the honor of the regiment that it would be sneaky to tell tales. Mr. Barton Smith, we're dealing here with a serious crime. It's your duty as a citizen. My to duty is to my own kind. They're always talking a lot of twaddle in this country about the wiping out of class distinctions. Well, they're wiping them out all right. Everyone in this country is becoming as common as cow dung. That's all I've got to say. You won't tell me the man's name. What about Major Ross? How many men were involved? All right, it's going to take a little longer. We'll find out ourselves, I promise. David, I want you to go through the bank records again. Get the name of every officer in the regiment who's ever received a check from Mr. Barton Smith. What about Major Ross? Major Ross and I are going to have a long and confidential talk. Darling, do hurry. Donald's due home any second. Whiskey for Jimmy. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Mm. Mm, you make yourself comfy while I get rid of my rumpled bed look. But I adore your rumpled bed look. <laughs> you wicked. Ah, it's you, James. Did you expect somebody else? No, no, certainly not. Where's Anne? Changing. I've invited her to lunch. Oh. Hello, darling. Are you changing or dressing? Does it matter? Not for much. I think it's time we had a little chat. Yeah, I felt it coming on. The old man doesn't like divorce in the regiment. Oh? Nor does your church. Nor does my wife. Ah, yeah, that's the point. Is it? As I'm not planning a divorce at the moment, I don't quite understand you. Then I'll be blunt. Shall I? By all means. 
I'm going to divorce Anne, naming you as the correspondent. To make things rather awkward for you, socially, and what is laughingly known as your career in the regiment, a brother officer's wife, remember, will come to an abrupt and permanent halt. Very true, old chap, all of it. But is it necessary? Oh, I suppose not. If you can afford it. Ah, money speaks louder than newspapers, is that it? I owe Barton Smith six thousand pounds. It's rather a lot. You've a lot to lose. All right. I'll pay him in the morning. Be sure you do, dear old boy. Major Ross speaking. Yes, Commander Gideon. I want to know where the money came from. Five times in the past year amounts to Barton Smith totaling three times your income. Of course, you're not obliged to say anything, but uh, the General did suggest that the officers should cooperate. I got the money from my wife. Each time? Until now. The patience with my gambling seems to have run out. And you got the money in cash? Yes which you then deposited and uh, subsequently paid to Barton Smith? Yes. Would you mind if we verify this with your wife? Commander, I don't give a damn what you do with my wife. I see. Well, thank you for coming down, Major Ross. Are you making any progress with the matter? Some, yes, yes. One of the men, of course. Oh, what makes you say so? I thought we made that quite clear to you. It couldn't be one of the officers. Well, goodbye, Major Ross. Goodbye, Commander. I'm with a distinguished military bearing, Major Ross. And? Oh, he's in the clear, I think. He says his wife gave him the money. So, we're back to square one. Not quite. Huh? Are you ready for a shocker? Go ahead. The general. What? At first, I left him out of my calculations. Then when you said, check all the officers' bank accounts, I did just that. He's broke. Impossible. Absolutely flat. The man's an institution, a belted earl, one of our great fighting generals, and not a bean to his name. Poor old boy. Look there. There? Mm. Excuse me. Another one there and there. Four checks from Barton Smith in the past nine months, totaling 5,100 pounds. Look at this last one. 900 pounds for credit to his account on the 14th. Yes, and overdrawn on the 13th. And of course, he could have won the money quite legitimately. Well, I hope so. So do I. Otherwise, it's like... It's like chopping down Nelson's column. How can we arrest that grand old fellow? Over to you. Now, sometimes I hate this job. I'd never tire of the sight. No, sir. Yeah, they're magnificent, eh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, now, Commander, if you've got news, I'll send for Colonel McAlpin. I prefer this to be confidential, sir. Oh. Uh, well, General, I... I don't quite know how to put this question, but... Tell me, do you ever gamble? Oh, well, I've been known to. Recently? It's possible. Substantial amounts? Uh, what are you getting at? General, I'd be very much obliged if you answered my questions directly and fully. Well, some years ago, I gambled quite heavily on anything and everything. That was after Mary died. My wife, you know. Then, when my son was killed in the war, I gambled a little harder for a while. I gambled almost everything away. Everything? I'm afraid so. Glen Shield House and all its steadings. The rivers, the lochs, the crofts, the villages. The stock exchange is worse than horses, Commander. It kicks harder, much harder. One doesn't let on, of course. One has one's pride. But what it's worth. Does anybody else know about this? I sincerely hope not. But why, may I ask, do you want to know? Have you an account with a firm of bookmakers called Barton Smith? Bart? Oh, of course, and with his father before him. Old friends. Oh, he's a splendid boy. Why? Well, have you recently had a biggish win with them? I believe I did. When? Oh, about two weeks ago, around the 14th. Uh, nearly 900 pounds. Nine. What was the name of the horse? Oh, it wasn't one horse. No, young Robbie told me to back a treble. Treble? Oh, well, I, uh, naturally, if you want a, a decent win. Well, I can't afford to bet much, you know. Well, do you remember the names of any of the three horses? 
Oh, I'm afraid I don't. Uh, does it matter? Because if so, Robbie will remember. He's my tipster, you know. Yes, yes, well, I'll, um, I'll ask him. Well, thank you for your time, General. I hope, hope you don't think that I've been prying. It's your job, young fella. And if it helps you to find out what's happening to the Balaclava Silver, I don't mind what questions you ask. Well, if, Mr. Old Gentleman, you're going to point the finger at the General, you'll be torn in from him. Well, he was terribly unconvincing about this 900-pound win. There's absolutely no doubt at all about him being broke. And broke's the red of it word. How bad is it? He's cashed in his pension. What, you mean he's on, on national assistance? Well, he would be if he didn't have too much pride to ask for it. What is it possible we've got to do something? Yes, the country, something must be done for it. We're forgetting the issue. The theft of the balaclava silver. Oh, is he implicated? Could he possibly be implicated? I don't know. Oh. What do we do, John? I don't know. Can I have a way with the grandson? And then? But the general's been swiping the silver, and I presume we arrest him. Isn't this the lousiest job? Yes, yeah, sometimes. You want to come with me when I see the boy? <laughs> no, I'm much too much of a coward, George. It is my old regiment, you know. They're through dinner, sir. They're just about to drink the loyal toast. Thank you, Sergeant. As soon as I can, I'll tell Captain McGregor you're here, sir. All right. Captain McGregor, I do. Far away? It's about your grandfather. Now, has he been needling you? Your tie crooked or something? No, he's been winning a lot of money on horses. On trebles, he can't remember. You're very fond of him, aren't you? Very. Fond enough to protect him, bolster him? Keep his own pride intact at the expense of your own? I'm 27. My grandfather is 87. He's a great man. He's given everything in him to his regiment, to his country. Now neither gives a damn. So you took the silver and disposed of it? My grandfather thinks he's been lucky on the horses. I see. Surely there was some other way, wasn't there? No, not really. The silver was, um, protest. Silver is dead. It neither breathes, nor feels, nor weeps, nor dies. It's just there. Cold and useless. My grandfather is an old man. Tired proud, and he has nothing. Now, which deserves more of the regiment? The living old man who bled for it, or the balaclava silver, which doesn't care? I don't know. I made my choice. With Barton Smith? He agreed a protest was necessary. You took the silver and gave him the money? And Barton Smith sent my grandfather checks. Ostensibly, his winnings on the bets I placed for him. Good chap, Barton Smith. Yes, yes. Better than I thought. Well, Commander, is there anything else? I don't think so. What have you done with the rest of it? It's in my flat. Under my bed. Oh, let's go and collect it, shall we? Why not? I suppose I'll need a toothbrush and a change. Yes, I'm afraid so. You do. 
Chalice on this. 